Welcome to the DHS program video series on the contraceptive calendar. This video is meant to be used as a supplement to the contraceptive calendar tutorial that is available on the DHS program website. This training video is for DHS data users to understand how the contraceptive calendar is completed during an interview. For the purposes of this video, we will show you how a contraceptive calendar is filled out using a paper questionnaire rather than through mobile data collection. At the end of this video, you should be able to understand the structure of the calendar and how it is completed during an interview. So how is the calendar structured? The calendar in the DHS-7 standard questionnaire looks like this. At the top of the calendar is the year of the survey. Each year has one row for each month, and for each month, data can be entered into two columns. Column 1 is births, pregnancies, and contraceptive use, and column 2 is discontinuation of contraceptive use. On the left side is a list of codes for column 1 and column 2 that are used to populate the calendar. Although the calendar is one page, it can contain more than five years of data for the calendar period. The calendar period includes the year of the interview, up to and including the month of the interview, plus five full years preceding the year of the interview. For example, if the interview took place in September of 2015, the calendar would cover all of 2015 up to and including September, plus five full years before 2015, from January 2010 through September 2015. So how is the calendar completed? During the interview process, the questionnaire is marked with a large C whenever a survey question corresponds to the contraceptive calendar. These questions occur in the reproduction section, and again in the contraception section of the individual woman's questionnaire. This information is then entered into the actual calendar. There is an order that is followed when filling out the calendar. The interviewer works through a series of steps. First, after the birth history and the questionnaire is completed, the interviewer will fill in the births that occurred during the calendar period by writing a B in column one for the month of the birth. They will also fill in the child's name next to the month of the birth and then ask the respondent how many months she had been pregnant. For each month the respondent was pregnant, the interviewer will work backwards from the month of birth and place a P in column 1 for each month of pregnancy. Because the month of the birth is included as a month of pregnancy, there will be one less P than total months the respondent reported that she was pregnant. Here in our example, you can see that the respondent gave birth to a child named Sarah in October 2014. She reported being nine months pregnant when Sarah was born, so there are eight months with a P in column one that precede the month of birth. The interviewer will then ascertain if the respondent is currently pregnant. If a respondent is currently pregnant, then a P will be recorded in column one for the month of the interview, with preceding months filled in according to how long the respondent has been pregnant. In this example, the respondent is not currently pregnant, and the month of the interview is therefore left blank. The next step in filling out the calendar is to record any terminated pregnancies that occurred during the calendar period. This includes miscarriages, stillbirths, and abortions. In the same manner as before, the event is recorded with a code in column 1. This time, a T is used. The months of pregnancy preceding the month of the event are also recorded. Now that all of the births and pregnancies that occurred in the calendar period have been recorded, the interviewer will return to the calendar during the contraception section of the questionnaire. First, if the respondent is not currently pregnant, the interviewer will ascertain if the respondent is currently using a contraceptive method. The interviewer will fill in the code for the current method being used. In this example, the respondent has reported current use of the pill for the last eight months since February 2015. We know the number 6 corresponds to the pill because of the list on the left-hand side of the page. Now the interviewer will work through the rest of the calendar asking about all episodes of contraceptive use and non-use, beginning with most recent episodes. Using births and pregnancies as reference points, the interviewer records contraceptive methods used, the duration of the method, and asks for a reason any method was discontinued. As the calendar is filled out by moving backwards in time through contraceptive episodes, the interviewers will fill in gaps before moving on to the previous event. Follow along to see how this example would be entered into the calendar. First, the interviewer will ask about the gap between the birth of the child and the most recent episode of contraceptive use. 
The respondent indicates that no method was used between November 2014 and January 2015. The interviewer then asks the respondent if she used a method between the terminated pregnancy in November 2010 and the beginning of the pregnancy in February 2014. The respondent indicates that she used periodic abstinence, also known as the rhythm method, starting in September 2013, up until she became pregnant with Sarah. The reason for discontinuation then is that she became pregnant. The interviewer then asks the respondent if she used a method between the terminated pregnancy in November 2010 and starting use of periodic abstinence in September 2013. The respondent reported that her prior use of a method was in 2012, from April to November. She used the pill, but later discontinued due to health concerns. Once again, the interviewer goes back and asks what occurred in the gap between her use of the pill and periodic abstinence. The respondent reports that no method was used in this time period. The interviewer then asks the respondent about the period before she started using the pill in April 2012. The prior episode of use was in 2011, from February to July. The respondent used an injectable then, and reported discontinuation of this method because of side effects. Again, the interviewer asks about the gap between the two methods, and the respondent says no method was used during this gap. Now the interviewer will ask about the episodes of contraceptive use in order to fill in the earliest year of the calendar. The interviewer asks about the two-month gap after the termination of the pregnancy in 2010 and before the use of the injectable in 2011. The respondent reports no method. Lastly, the respondent reports that she was using no method in the beginning of 2010 before her pregnancy that ended in a termination. Now that all the months up to the month of the interview have a code for a birth, termination, pregnancy, contraceptive method or non-use of a method in column 1, and each discontinuation of a method is recorded in column 2, the calendar is complete. This video provided a brief overview of how the contraceptive calendar is completed during the individual woman's interview. If you have any additional questions, please reference the contraceptive calendar tutorial available on our website or visit the DHS user forum.